Hey everyone's Dave here and today we'll be finally doing the comparison video of Quest 2 and Quest Pro all together. I'm still on the sickly side though now it changed to my ears which I can't hear on one. So it's interesting nowadays to play VR because on one side I know what's happening but then I'm like oh my god because <laughs> spatial audio is pretty important and just knowing what's around you without turning like some things can happen. The previous video of this kind I made around two years ago when I was doing the original Quest and Quest 2. At the time it was a pretty big success because not only people that watch my channel enjoyed that, but also some other ones reached out to me like external ones that never even saw my channel. So I was very much happy with the outcome for the right reasons as well, because I believe that in terms of Quest content specifically, hardware, whatever games, I am the most qualified person here. And I certainly know way more stuff than other people in the community since I spent literally every single day with this platform. I know its ups and downs and the whole bullshit that I was dealing with for so long. So if you expect to get some concrete knowledge from today's video then you're in good hands. I'm gonna be using a modified structure that I did in the previous video and then help myself with the specifics like parameters and just numbers in general that I got from Upload VR. But overall it's just gonna be my pure impressions and what's been working and not. I also got few accessories besides the headset itself. The whole package ended up to be 2000 euro. Which is kind of hard on my wallet nowadays because I don't work in the weekends, but what I'm doing for a great cause is um, commendable. <laughs> First of all, this is my current setup with Quest 2. This is kind of like in the traveling mode now because nowadays I have it at home. Whether if I want to play something or just demo to other people, this is essentially what I'm doing. This is the full Quest Pro package that I'm using nowadays. It has additionally the headphones attached and full light blocking, which I'm gonna review later, so I'll just take this off now. So like bare bones, it's just literally a piece of <laughs> tech like that. Very much simplistic and the design itself went for something more professional. Due to the used pancake lenses, this is definitely way slimmer than the Quest 2 and much lighter in weight on the front, but that's also because the battery was moved here on the back. And it's a one piece design, like you can't really modify it or take out something. And also I didn't see any modifications that could be done to it so far. The thing about this headset is that you kind of wear it on top of your head and it's not the same style of wearing because there is no like top strap it's kind of like hanging on the forehead and then you secure it a little bit on the back or how deep you want I still to this day can't figure it out how to actually wear it properly and it's not because of the face structure and stuff like that it's just the headset itself doesn't support the proper wearing of it <laughs> which i'll explain later because it's very just weird how it was solved in terms of like comfortability out of the box this is pretty much the best one in terms of just <laughs> pleasure of wearing both quest 1 and quest 2 were just horrible because of the straps and then the faceplate used. For longer periods of time, it was just pretty much impossible to endure the pain and Pro is definitely better in that category, but it's not perfect either. And it also goes to just proper wearing it. The most painful thing you endure here is on the forehead because it sits like on your face, even though the battery is on the back, the weight still kind of like shifts here. You can kind of modify it depending on the angle you want to get in the headset. And also there's a proper app setup that helps you with just the scrolling and then the angles and everything, but that's also not correct. So it's an art itself to figure out the actual proper way of <laughs> using it for some reason. Major difference as well is that there is no top strap. So the whole weight goes in two points instead of like the three. And if it's specifically for me or not, the top strap actually is very much important because then the weight is actually way more better distributed and then everything just works in this three point system. I saw some people online that they strapped like a band on top and then just fixed it in place, which is a little bit like unusual method, but that actually works I'm just waiting for like more official solutions if it's from VR cover or 
anyone really to <laughs> figure it out. This headset also has like no faceplate, so you can see literally everything on the sides and on the bottom if you don't use any blockers. That's kind of like because the nature or <laughs> the predicted usage of it would be pass through and just AR stuff. For VR in terms of immersion and just light leakage, it really depends on you actually. Because for me specifically, I don't really need anything to really be immersed in what I'm doing. It's nice to not be distracted what's going on outside of the headset, but if there's nothing going on anyways always, then there's no point to it. Later on I'll talk about the light blockers and the full one in more detail, but wrapping up the external design with the whole leather pads and just the sleek design, everything seems great. Let's go into more software side of things in terms of parameters and just the hardware used. The biggest upgrade you'll notice immediately are the lenses, obviously. It's jumping to pancake ones, which changes a lot of things about this headset in terms of size, weight, clarity, just everything about it. It's a magical piece of technology. Like, I thought Quest 2 was high resolution, stuff like that. But when I saw through those babies, I'm not exaggerating, it would be like I'm looking at the <laughs> real life stuff. There's not a single speck of pixel you can notice there and everything is so clear to the point that the graphics are really naturally enhanced everywhere possible because some games and apps might be high quality, it's just you won't notice if you don't have a hardware to support it. The field of view is kind of similar the thing about the lenses as well is that they don't cut off the vision like it was in the Quest 2. So you don't have like a black border on the side, it's kind of like gradually diminishing the image. So then you have a sense that everything is like kind of widened and you see more stuff. You feel like it's more natural when that actually happens and not just something cutting you off. Lens separation was also upgraded also in a different way because it's not like automatic, you still shift the thing in the headset but because of the eye tracking and the demos inside you can pretty much predict what's your concrete spacing so you don't need to put a ruler on your forehead and it's not like snapping in place you pretty much just move it around fluidly. Quest Pro uses Quantum Dot LCD with some mini LED in the background with a little bit better pixel per eye. It's not necessarily noticeable in the headset mainly because of the pancake lenses that make things insanely clear it's just that the same situation like in Quest 2 with dark backgrounds and just some scenes. The darker colors tend to blend in and get a little bit weird even though we have this local dimming. I never had a huge problem with it mainly because I don't play horror games but it is definitely noticeable and I can tell why some people prefer still to this day Quest 1 parameters. The default refresh rate was apt but the max one was downgraded. I'm gonna talk about more specifically about this when we'll have the recording section but it's all very personal and between those options I didn't really see like much difference although I will say consistently you won't get 90 Hertz just because most of the applications don't support that but I guess a default is a default even though <laughs> no one keeps rules in check the chipset is kind of the same it's XR2 Gen 1 plus it's just that it has way better cooling and going with that performance meaning in games you don't experience skips and just everything is very smooth like I did not notice a single time the headset overheating and if the headset doesn't warm up and it has a very cool solutions to just cooling system of course it's gonna perform better it's definitely not a big plastic box that quest 2 is that feels like a mobile oven with no ventilation system whatsoever so automatically pro wins in this category as well as ram was whoa pretty much doubled i didn't know that it just means that everything you'll be doing is much smoother inside the applications and multitasking like you can have multiple applications open and installing having audio in the background everything Thing. It's kind of like a PC at this point. Eye tracking and face tracking available. I'm kind of gonna glance it over because as a gamer you won't use it that much. I've heard there are some games on the way that will be using like forbidden rendering or just based on where you look. So far I did not really have any usage of it because I'm not playing any social games nowadays. So like personally for me the value instantly goes down because I'm not gonna use those features. But it is definitely cool to see the face expressions and just how the headset actually like handles your whole face. Is it weird? Like it's not just the headset at this point, it's just the whole... <laughs> 
top aperture. We have hand tracking again available. I feel like it's much better. Maybe because of the performance altogether and the sensors, it picks up way faster than in Quest 2. Like the fingers, everything is battery smooth. And automatically applications that use hand tracking are instantly better. Switching between hands and controls is also not a problem. I feel like it's like a high-end technology for now. Pass-through was massively upgraded to the color one and much higher resolution. To me it's still kinda not enough in terms of the resolution and the clarity. It is definitely better, it's just never gonna replace the real eyes obviously. But the stuff like screens, text, mobile phone, everything is still a bit blurry. You can pick up some things if you really concentrate and the feeling that you're actually in the room having no headset but having actually makes up for a good illusion, everything is on the right track, so far personally not enough for me. Lastly the whole battery situation that a lot of people were talking about. Here's the thing, if you are a gamer and you use it for games, not using eye tracking and face tracking, the battery life not using those features is actually longer about 30 minutes or one hour concerning the previous headset. So it really depends on your personal usage and what you're doing with it. I personally have no issues with it, maybe because I can't even spend more than one hour a day a little bit longer sometimes, but I'm just limited nowadays with the time I can spend being here in the studio. So like longer sessions than that is definitely out for me, but like seeing the percentages when I'm leaving the headset, it seems to be the case. Let's talk about the controllers now, <laughs> because they deserve their own section. Current ones from Quest 2, a ring, two buttons, trigger, grab, joystick, simplistic. Now here are the pro ones. <laughs> instantly you can tell there's no ring but already some marks that i hit the wall whoopsie <laughs> the thing about this it kind of feels like a pilot that you have for your tv it was clearly made for professional use and not necessarily for gaming but that's where they actually excel if you compare the two the pro ones are actually smaller with weight it's pretty much the same if you have a battery of course in it there might be some small grams difference but not necessarily something you'll notice we are dropping the pressure sensor that we had here for like a curved kind of touchpad apparently. I've seen this controller had multiple functions kinda disabled on launch, which is very weird considering this whole piece of technology is like a beast. Because we're dropping a ring from it, we have three cameras that self-track each other from the other one. They don't appear instantly in the headset when you're booting up, it takes maybe like from 5 to 10 seconds on top. They're kinda like their own thing because it has a chipset. It's a computer, literally. I feel like there's definitely untapped power with it still, that Meta maybe will turn it on sometime. But what can I say in terms of performance and tracking? Flawless. And I'm talking about rhythm games, applications with workouts, everything highly dynamic. They are not disappearing from your headset anytime soon. Moreover, if you plan to get an upgrade not using the headset but the controllers for Quest 2, Oh yes, it's worth it. Because they self-track themselves and don't rely on the ring that has like sensors in it, you can do whatever you want with it, going from the back, from your head. If you don't want to see them in the headset, they will force you to. Like there are little buggers that make the whole package so much better, it's black magic at this point. Concerning the battery life, it's kind of similar to the headset. Like I was getting almost similar percentages when I was leaving the headset, maybe a bit better with the controllers, but it also depends on your usage. Like if you heavily use them in the application, then the battery will go down pretty much in the same line as the headset. I thought I would have a problem that there is no option to put like an external battery, but seeing that I don't use it for prolonged sessions, it's perfect. I can just praise it more and more. I just hope they won't be breaking anytime soon because there's no ring, so there's more potential to hit something. They seem sturdy anyway, so everything's good. Let's talk about the software itself and then recordings, everything 
pretty much along the lines. It uses the same iOS like Quest 2 with multiple windows available and just like multitasking in general. There's definitely way more things happening in the settings section since maybe like a quarter of functions you won't see on Quest 2 and it's not necessarily because of the technology and hardware used, it's just more possible to customize it to your own preferences and to what you want. Everything is working smooth, no stutters, no bullshit happening. It is a direct result of being a clean slate in terms of storage, more RAM available, like everything pretty much goes into the smoothness of it all. What's the most important for me and interesting actually thing about this headset is the recording setup. There is the same dynamic that you do with Quest 2 with some slight additions actually post recording. Recently Meta unlocked more options in terms of frame rate, bit rate, things of that nature. Everything's fairly the same here because of the clarity that the resolution gives and just more potential graphics and better quality going on, the recordings jumped in terms of the file size and the potential crashing of it. I'm using a higher frame rate option and maximum bitrate available. If I was confident to make 30 minute clips on Quest 2 with that settings, here it's not necessarily possible and it also depends on the game or application you record. Because if there are more stuff going on on the screen, the whole file will just like jump instantly. My sweet point now is 20 minutes, might be a little bit annoying for some, but I'm very anal about visuals and just the output that I give on the YouTube. So I'm sacrificing my patience in this situation, but overall I'm pretty much happy with the procedure that we have now. In terms of audio issues, skips, everything that's included. Pro handles it better, but still not perfect <laughs> to this day after so many years of being in the Quest Kingdom. And it's not gonna change ever because it's specifically tied to the software and iOS used. When you're quitting to the menu, switching applications in between, that's where the audio dissing start. It is directly tied to the performance of the headset itself because it doesn't overheat, it gives more performance and you have more RAM. So you have more headroom while you're playing and recording at the same time in a result, the audio runs smoothly all across the footage, sometimes you just need to alter the start and then pretty much continues like it should be. I guess my quest was just literally fried from working all those months that I started to have some insane problems, now pretty much everything is resolved, there were just some minor stuff left off that at this point with my skills in editing, it's like nothing. However, what's very interesting when I transitioned to Pro is the footage itself in terms of visuals, more importantly, the edges. Maybe you noticed or not when you were watching the Quest 2 footage and now the Pro, but sometimes if you would move your head too fast or the frame would skip due to some processing issue, the whole image would like cut off for very quick second and then continue. The Pro doesn't really do that, but instead it's kind of like a jiggle movement with the image. When I saw that it was a very, very weird find. And it doesn't really matter what you're doing because if it's like high impact movement or even the slow one, that happens anyways. And to this day I'm not quite sure why. If it's a solution instead of cutting the whole frame or is it related to field of view because now it's like gradually dimming instead of cutting the peripheral. It's definitely something that I've never seen before but on the other hand, I don't need to cut the footage in pieces and just like, you know, jump through the parts for you to not see that issue. Instead, it's just like moving, like it's alive footage at this point. Also, on top of that, if you compare those two footage videos, you can definitely tell, and I'm not crazy by saying that, the Pro one, for some weird reason, goes into two thirds of the bottom screen and then one third of the top is left off, like there's nothing happening. If it's because of the overall comfort solution for the whole headset or the lenses being at a very different angle from the Quest 2, like I've been trying my best to, I don't know, look down or just tilt my head to actually represent the same thing that I see. But looking at the recent clips, I didn't feel like I managed it fully. I'm trying, but it's another weird thing happening here. In total, the whole procedure is definitely better and <laughs> I very much appreciate that. I'm seeing now the length of how long I've been recording. 
holy moly <laughs> maybe cutting the whole video in two would be a better solution this year that's also because i got way more accessories than i got with my quest 2 launch and i want to get more in details with them so i think we'll stop here for today and then we'll recontinue someday later with just the whole additional stuff situation going on <laughs> unfortunately or maybe not i don't know I can't still yet retire the quest 2 because some games are still tied to it that I can't make it work on the Pro. If it's because of the cloud saves or just the features, at this point I could care less, but Quest Pro for now is my main <laughs> thing to use in the studio. The question stands, is it worth all the money that you have to spend for it? Remember, I'm living in Europe, so the price for me is much higher due to the taxes. At the end, is it worth the money considering all the hardware features and just the stuff that you're getting? I feel like it heavily depends on your relationship with money. <laughs> We're getting philosophical here. If I feel better, if the whole procedure is better, it makes things better going from Quest 2 to this setup, I feel like it's worth definitely what's asking. It is absolutely overpriced simply because it was aimed at the business side of things and to fully utilize its spectrum of possibilities. It's gonna take a lot of effort from you, not because it's just hard. There are so many possibilities coming from this headset that just grasping it is a struggle. If you're really paying attention to the performance, the visuals, tracking with the new controllers, everything in that package is worth it. It is a top tier experience by far currently available, but it's definitely not something mandatory to get to enjoy VR anew. I like this headset because of the personal reasons and I think people have to approach it from this side. There are definitely things that could be better, I think I will more address it in the accessory video, but overall I'm pretty much happy with what I have here now. My wallet is crying, but it was always crying, like that's its fate. Let me know if you have any questions about anything really because <laughs> I can definitely answer them and I'll see you in the second part of this uh, adventure. <laughs> Cheers!